Well, that painting, Making Bricks, um, at that point, I'm still at the same time that I'm trying to and put content into the work, and I'm very conscious of that. How can I put things into the work? Well, I went to the library at UT, and I wasn't a student, but I'd go in there anyways and just go up. So I, I just take the elevator up to any floor, and I got off. So whatever floor, the button, you know, push, and the door opens, and I walk right out, and there's all these huge, oversized books, old books, that were facsimile writing. And I started up with these things, and one was uh, from the Dutch East India Company. And it was this big book, this big, with facsimile pages of all this beautiful old handwriting, Dutch writing. And um, it had transcribed, you know, on the back of the pages, I think, what it says on the front. So I just took those books like I was a student. I took three or four of those big books, and I said, I'm going to go down to the Xerox machine. I'll see if they'll let me do it. Maybe they won't, but I'll try. So I went down and I got my bunch of dimes and I went over there and I started slapping these old books right on the Xerox and nobody came over and told me not to. So I copied many pages out of it. There was that book, there was uh, Lewis and Clark's diaries, and then there was um, a ship's log from the mid-1800s, this ship that went from Boston around to San Francisco. So those three things, I went home with a load of Xeroxes of this. And so I loved that Dutch writing and there was one passage in there that said, uh, we have plenty of clay, we have plenty of lime, but we don't know how to make bricks. Send some Norwegians. That's what was transcribed. So I took that and put it right up in the middle of that piece. And that was the story. And to me, I was thrilled because that was some of the earliest you know, development in the United States by Europeans, you know, coming over and writing back, saying what they needed and what they lacked. And, uh, so it was early American history. It was beautiful writing. It was a story. And then it was even a little funny story about Norwegians and bricks. I had no idea they were experienced brick makers back then. So that was basically the, the foundation for that whole painting. One thing that was super important for me when I first moved here was the folk artists all through the South. I'd never seen folk art. And to me, where I came, my, my aesthetic sensibility from going to art school in the Bay Area is a lot of color in the work. You know, William Wiley, Robert Arneson. Richard Shaw, Robert Hudson, you know, great artists, you know how colorful things are hanging, I mean these are constructed things, and then beautiful drawing with that, and lots of color, and, and that, that's my sensibility, that, that's kind of what I brought. Uh, but um, I, I had the sense that, that there were a lot of artists around, but then you know, the folk artists had that, that same kind of sensibility, political, mm -hmm. very passionate, Sometimes religion, patriotism, you know, the basic kind of themes of Southern folk art. Oh, it was raw. I mean, we'd go to Bessie Hardy's basement. Oh, and she'd talk to us, and it was, you could just walk out of there in chills. With, with the, between the work and, and what she would say, she'd half scare you to death. But then hey, the other half would really give you some things to think about, challenge you. You know, I mean, Bessie was a, you know, regular old. A black woman from Alcoa, but she was powerful. She just had like, you know, whatever, you know, whatever an aura is, I don't know, but she had one, you know, this spiky thing coming out of her filled with energy. She's a powerful woman.